So let's talk radical expressions. If we look at something like the cubed root of D, that can be written in exponent form using the index and the exponent. The index is the number outside the radical symbol and that tells you what root and the index always becomes the denominator denominator of the fraction that represents the exponent when you put the radical expression into exponent form so we know the index will be the denominator. The exponent will be the numerator. Well, wait, there's no exponent for this D, but every value has an exponent, whether we write it or not. What number could we fill in? D to the what power is still equivalent to D, D to the first power. So we would know that the exponent here is one, so d to the one-third power would be our rational exponent form. Now you see the relationship between radical expression form and then you've got rational exponent form. One has the exponent and no radical symbol and the other one has the radical. So we are then going to use that understanding to simplify problems using properties of exponents. So we can do problems like the fifth root of d to the third power times the square root of d. <clears throat> Knowing how to put these in rational exponent form will allow us to use the product of powers property. Refresher, the product of powers property tells me that if I'm multiplying something like x to the fourth power, which just means x times x times x times x, right? And then I multiply that by x to the third power, so I'm basically taking that x times x times x times x and going times x times x times x. That can be rewritten or simplified to x to the what power? What am I going to do with the 4 and 3 here when I simplify how many x's are being multiplied in all? 7, so x to the seventh power. You just apply the product of powers property, which states that when you're multiplying, you're going to add the exponents. So now, if I know how to convert this to rational exponent form, remember the index becomes the denominator. So I know the 5 is going to go on the bottom of the fraction when I remove the radical. It's going to be over 5. And the 3 will be on the top. Then the square root of D, well, there's no numbers anywhere. The index, we need the index for the denominator, and we need the exponent for the numerator. If it's square root, square is the second root, and if the exponent's not there, we know that's d to the first power. So now we can write that where the index is 2. Anything square root is going to be with a denominator of 2. So that's d to the 1 half power. Once we have it in rational exponent form and we understand the product of powers property, then we can apply 
the product of power's property, which tells me I need to do what with these two fractions that represent the exponents when the base is D? Keep the base D and add the exponents. So I need to figure out what is three fifths plus one half. Adding and subtracting fractions, if you recall, requires common denominators. Start with that bigger number, five, two doesn't go into five, but if we, if we do multiples of five, five, 10, two does divide into 10 equally. So 10 is the least common multiple, which would then be our least common denominator. Fives being multiplied by two to get 10, that means you have to multiply the numerator of that fraction three by two to get an equivalent fraction, six tenths. Three fifths is equivalent to six tenths. One half is equivalent to twos being multiplied by what to get 10? Multiply the numerator by the same thing as the denominator to make an equivalent fraction and you get five. And therefore you can add your fractions now that they have a common denominator. D to the six plus five is 11. So 11 tenths. And that would be rational exponent form. This can be simplified and simplifying is a little, uh, looks a little different. So let's look at the radical form and simplifying for that final answer there. What would be the radical form of D to the 11 tenths power? Well, if we know the index becomes the denominator, then I'm just gonna go the other way, create my radical sign and use the denominator as the index. And what I'm left with is D to the numerator power. That is not simplest form because the index is less than the exponent or when exponent Form, you can tell that easily because the top is bigger than the bottom. So that's a radical that can be simplified. And you can do it either way. You can do it from here and break that apart and understand that that's going to be the same thing as d to the 10 over 10, which is just d to the first power, times d to the 1 over 10 power. So times d to the one-tenth, which now if I put that in radical form, that's just d times the tenth root of d to the first power. <clears throat> because what you're doing there is you're saying that that tenth root of d to the tenth, we know that is equal to d. But we're still left with a tenth root of d because there were 11 to begin with and that would be the simplest form in radical form that's the product property what about the quotient property and the uh, power of a power property obviously those are ones to look at as well